Hey, what is going on, guys? DK back at you with another video here for the showdown slate for the NBA Finals between Golden State and Toronto. And we got a huge contest here uh, on DraftKings. $1 million to first $25 entry. I'm over 100,000 uh, entries, so um, you're definitely going to want to get a, you know, a piece of this action. Um, let's see if we can make some money here. So we'll start at the top here with Kawhi Leonard at 11.8. Just been the do-it-all guy for Toronto. Um, been playing out of his mind here in the playoffs. Um, you know, he's got all the usage here. So um, I do like him as a spend up. And just below him, still no KD. Um, you know, he's getting close to practicing, but still isn't practice yet. So I just say we at least KD's gonna be out for the next few games. So that means we got more of the Steph Curry shows with with no Durant. Steph has really um, stepped up here. Um, just been you know he's been taking over. So another spend up I do really like, and then Draymond right below him at ten point six. Also just been playing out of his mind here in the playoffs. Basically triple double almost every single game. So, um, you know, if you're kind of di differentiating between these top three guys, it's tough. Um, I like all three of them. So, um, the question is, can you get all three in your lineup and still be confident? I st I think it's possible. So, if we go captain, let's just say we plug in quiet captain and then put Steph and Draymond in there. Um, it's tough, but you still got three point four k remaining. So. If you can get some value guys in there, I still I um, I think this lineup is definitely doable. Um, but okay, so like I said, the three studs, it's it's really hard to um, you know differentiate you know those three. I like them all a lot. Um, probably gonna play at least two, maybe three. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how uh, roster construction goes. And then Siakam, uh, just below Draymond here at nine k. He's kind of been hit or miss here in the playoffs, and I just don't think I would risk it with Siakam here. You know, I'd much rather just pay the extra uh, 1600 for Draymond, who's just got way more upside right now. Um, Siakam, he has had a couple good games here in the playoffs. Like I said, just been a little too inconsistent. The price tag's too much for me. Um, so I'm going to be off Siakam. And then Clay Thompson at 8.4. He's kind of been a uh, steady guy. You know, it's been, you know, Steph and Draymond who have really showed up here with no KD. Clay's just been kind of coasting. Hasn't really had a huge game. Um, we'll probably have, you know, one big game here in the finals. Where you know he just takes over and starts you know nailing threes, but um, other than that, you know I think he's perfectly fine at eight point four. Um, you know don't don't really have an issue with him. Kyle Lowry just below Clay at seven point eight. A guy that you know the minutes are there for him. Um, you know he's a guy that he doesn't really necessarily have to score the ball to get fantasy points. So he can pick it up points, you know, with assists, rebounds. Um, you know, he'll get you a steal every once in a while. So. Um, I think he's perfectly fine at 7.8. If you want to go more towards the mid-tier, um, you know, and kind of go more of a balanced lineup, you know, I don't mind Lowry at all. But uh, me personally, I'm probably going to go more of the Stars and Scrubs approach. Probably, you know, like I said, play two, maybe even all three of Kawhi, Steph, and Draymond. So a lot of these mid-tier guys, I'm probably going to be off. And then Boogie Cousins at 7K. Um, they said he's pain-free and he's questionable going into game one. So this is the big news we're waiting on. If he's out, you know, that's going to open up, uh, you know, a lot of minutes for, um, you know, Golden State Bigs, you know, Looney, uh, Jordan Bell, Jarebko, probably Bogut will get some minutes. Um, we'll get to those value guys here in a sec. But um, Boogie at 7K, I really could only play him if, you know, if he started and I knew he was going to, you know, play at least 20 minutes. Um, but I really think... Even if he plays, they're probably going to limit him. So um, this is one we're going to have to kind of wait for news on. If we get news, confirmation that he's going to start and he's going to you know, be on a, what, a 25 minutes limit, then I would like Boogie. But um, I really don't think he's, um, you know, even if he plays, I don't think he plays that much. So probably going to be off him out here for game one. Iguodala, also questionable. Um, the other thing is probable now, so they do expect him to play. At 6.6, .6, I think he's okay. Again, I'm kind of going to be off the mid-tier guys because I'm going more with the Stars and Scrubs approach. Um, but I think Iguodala is okay. Probably a little too pricey for me. Um, and then Marcus Saul here at 6K. So um, the availability of Boogie actually does um, you know, impact Marcus Saul. If Boogie plays, then you know, Marcus Saul is going to have to be out there for you know, minutes because they need someone to guard Boogie. If Boogie's out, Golden State can kind of run more small ball, and that concerns me with Marc Gasol. Um, you know, obviously it doesn't match up too well against Golden State going small ball, so that is the concern here with Gasol. I think if Boogie plays, it's a boost to Gasol. Um, 
So yeah, I think Marcus Saul. I'm a little. I'm just a little worried about the minutes. If I if I knew you know he's going to play at least 30, 35 minutes, then I would like him. But I, I it just worries me with Golden State going small. Man Fleet, a guy who's been playing really well at the bench. You know he was terrible um, most of the playoffs until his last few games here in the playoffs or in you know the last last round. Um, the minutes have been there too: 31, 25, 37, 34 minutes. But the price is up on him. You know, 5.4K, that's kind of pricey for Fred Van Fleet. Um, again, I know he's been playing pretty well here. Um, also, he's shot the ball really well, though. I don't think we can expect that to continue. 5 of 6, 7 of 13, 5 of 6. So he's been shooting the ball really well. Um, you know, I think he's okay. Um, but, I, again, I, I don't think we can expect him to continue to shoot like that. So probably going to be off him. Looney at 4.8. Um, you know, he gets a huge boost if Buggy does miss. Um, I think he would be locked into probably 25 minutes. Um, you know, also the him on the price on him, I think is perfectly fair. 4.8. Um, you know, guy that's you know had some decent games, had one big game here last last game against Portland. So um, I think he's priced accordingly, and have no issue with Kevon Looney there. Um, Ibaka. So if Golden State runs more small ball, um, you know maybe Ibaka gets some four, some more minutes here. Um, you know, maybe they even play Siakam at the five. I don't. I don't really know how Toronto's going to go about this, but um, I do think it's a slight boost to Ibaka. I think he matched up a little better here against Golden State than Gasol does. At four point two K, again, another guy that has been a little inconsistent here. 17, 39, 13, 12. But um, I think the minutes will be there. Um, the salary's pretty cheap, so I think Ibaka, um, a value guy, I'm definitely considering here. Norman Powell at 3.6. Um, also, the minutes have kind of been there. Um, besides, you know, last game, you know, 30, 32, 24. Um, now, the minutes are declining, you know, 24, 17 even last time out. So, you know, I like him if he's going to play 30 minutes, but if he's going to play 17 minutes, then it's a little tough. So it's a little t it's a little hard um, to kind of break this down. Um, like I said, I, I would like him if he plays the, the upper tier of those minutes range. But if he's going to only play like 15 or so minutes, then eh, not so much. So it's a little risky here with Norman Powell. But if he gets the minutes, um, I think he's definitely a value guy you have to consider here at 3.6. Danny Green, uh, the minutes were way down on him, giving him to Norman Powell, Fred Van Fleet. So I'm just off him for sure at 3.2K there. Um, McKinney here at 2.8 would be a guy that would get a boost if Iguodala does miss. But Iguodala probable. Um, if Iguodala plays, I'm just off McKinney. If Iguodala misses, um, McKinney would most likely pick up a start. Again, not really a high usage guy, but a 2.8K wouldn't need a whole lot to, to get you there. So only would consider him if Iguodala does miss. Livingston, um, just not for me. I don't think the minutes are going to be there. Um, did play 22 last time against Portland and shot 4 of 4. Um, don't think we expected that again from Livingston. So um, not really a Bailey guy that I'm considering. Jordan Bell here at 2K. Played really well against Portland. Um, you know, the minutes were you know, right right around the 10 to 15 minute range. And this is a guy that's going to produce when he's out there. He'll get your blocks, he'll get your steals, he'll get your rebounds. So um, at 2K, um, a value guy I do like. And, um, you know, if he's going to continue to play, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, I think mean, you have to consider him. Now, if Boogie's back, that's obviously going to hurt Jordan Bell. Um, you know, if Marcus Saul's out there a lot, um, that's not really the best matchup for Jordan Bell either. So, um, we do have to kind of wait for news. If Boogie's out, um, I think Jordan Bell should be safe to play 10 to 15 minutes, but you never know with Steve Kerr. So, um, a value guy, um, one, probably one of my favorite value plays, but also does carry some risk. You know, there's always a chance that he just doesn't even see the court at all, um, because this is, you know, a, a new series. So, um, that's kind of my thoughts with Jordan Bell. Jareb Koa, 1.8, you know, He's also been pretty solid here when he gets minutes. I think I would just prefer to play Jordan Bell, but um, don't have an issue with Jarebka there at 1.8. Again, it would be another guy that would get a boost if Boogie does miss. And then below that, uh, Quinn Cook. Uh, just not seeing enough minutes for me. Don't think I can go there. Um, Jody Meeks, no thank you. Now Bogut here at 1.2. So if Boogie misses, um, I kind of like Bogut here at 1.2. I know... Hasn't really played much against in that Portland series, but um, he's the best matchup here for Marc Gasol. So whenever Marc Gasol's out there, um, that's going to be a boost to Bogut. I'd assume if Boogie misses, Bogut picks up the start. 
and hopefully plays, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. We did see the last time we started, he only played three minutes. But I think he matched up better here against Toronto. Again, Marcus All, um, you know, one of the bigger centers. So they're going to need um, Bogut out there probably for the defensive, you know, reason. So uh, for that reason, um, I do like him here 1.2K. And again, we're going to have to kind of wait for starting lineup news, um, DeMarcus Cousins news. But yeah, if if Boogie's out and Bogut starts, I think he's um, a value guy that I'm definitely considering here 1.2K. And then below that, I don't think we have to go there. I don't think any of these guys will see the court unless it's a unless it's like a huge blowout. If you want to play the huge blowout role, like either team gets blown out and like the bench guys, then the bench guys get run. The one guy I would take a shot on if you're making like a hundred lineups in one lineup would be Chris Boucher here at one K. Um, just a guy that's super productive when he gets minutes. I'm just throwing that out there, you know, if there's a chance that's a, that's a super blowout. Um, he would probably be the one guy that I would want, but again, that's just like a shot in the shot in the dark there. So, um, yeah, as far as the captain goes, um, I want one of these top three guys here with Kawhi, Steph, Draymond. Now you could go really cheap as your captain and then you know fit basically whoever else you want, but I always want to put the captain as um, you know the guy who I think is going to score the most points. So for me, that's either going to be Kawhi, Steph, or Draymond. And again. Um, my build is probably going to be more of the stars and the scrubs approach. So if you if you like some of these mid tier guys, um, you know, I'm not going to talk you off any of them. But um, just for my build, I want to get you know at least two of these top three guys and then go um, you know some of the value guys. So I think that's enough for today's video, guys. If you haven't been enjoying the content, please like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section down below. It's also important to follow me on Twitter. That will be in the description below. I'll give my thoughts. As more news comes out, again, we're waiting on uh, DeMarcus Cousins news. We're waiting on Iguodala news. So definitely important to follow me on Twitter. Um, and, yeah, let's see if we can make some money here. Um, oh, one more thing I will bring up. Um, since it's a million uh, dollars to first, if you want to try to get really unique here and, and win the million to yourself, you're going to have to, you know, probably chalk two to $3,000 worth of salary. So um, if, you're, if you want to try to get first alone, you definitely gonna have to make a unique lineup where uh, probably you know, you know leave what two to four thousand dollars worth of salary on the table. Um, so yeah, but um, if you just want to you know make your normal lineup, um, you know that's probably what I'm gonna do. Just make the best possible lineup and then split it with however many people have the same lineup as me. So um, yeah, and I'll be back for another video for game two here. So I will see you guys then.